I wish I could take credit for <laughs> how cool of a person Joel is, but I can't. I think that he has a heart of an artist. He is uh, very expressive in, you know, how he interacts with his world and his community. He's got some really awesome friends, and I think that, you know, the people that see him look way beyond his disability. I met Joel early 2000s through a friend, and I started working here coming up on eight years ago, and he would come in here every day and just love the music, he loved to be around the records and stuff, and always in a good mood and stuff. I gradually became friends with him over a period of time. He'd just come in every day. He's lived here since I think the mid 80s in this in Ballard and so he's has little roots, you know, and just people love seeing him every day. It's become like a, people kind of nicknamed him the mayor of Ballard, you know. So I think he just really kind of feels the energy in a different way than other people do. Joel's lived in Ballard pretty much all his life. Uh, the house that he had lived in prior to the house he's in now, he'd been in that house for about 27 years. But he kind of outgrew it, sort of literally. He, Joel collects things, and so he amassed, you know, lots of records, that, probably thousands of records. He's also an artist. He makes furniture. He also does sculpturing. And so uh, a lot of that stuff over the years accumulated, and Joel had had so much stuff in his house that the landlord identified it as being a fire hazard. After his lease was over, they, they decided to terminate his lease, which categorically left him as somebody who didn't have a home, which means he was homeless. I think he was frustrated that he couldn't get out and about. He definitely likes to be independent and to do his own thing. He doesn't really like to be told what to do or where to go. He's got kind of Likes, likes to be his own person and like who doesn't, you know? One thing that we didn't anticipate is that his landlord would sue him in small claims for the damage to the apartment. The landlord was unwilling to make repairs most of the time that Joel lived there. So many of the claims that he was making we believed were unfair. So one of the things that the ARC did was help Joel get access to an attorney that was free of cost for him that would defend him in the small claims action so that he wouldn't have to spend the small amount of money he had to go toward rents on repairs that he really shouldn't be responsible for. The ARC also assisted Joel then in that process to communicate and to negotiate a settlement. Joel's settlement went to the Department of Commerce and the landlord mitigation program that's set up ended up paying for the repairs that the landlord was demanding. Well, the first thing we did was we made sure that Anything that was coming out of his house was Joel's decision to either be thrown out, uh, stuff that was unnecessary, or stuff that he found of value. We wanted to make sure that there was an additional um, storage unit for him to put his stuff in. The ARC also got in communication and, and talked with Provail about their availability and, and their actual willingness to have him stay at a temporary house while we were looking for housing. And so that was a really great partnership between the ARC and Provail. When he moved to Shoreline, there was still, there was a lot of uncertainty. I mean, you know, I, I, I know that he knew that that was a temporary placement. Um, also, I know that that's not where he really necessarily wanted to land eventually. His eyes were always set to Ballard. The Ballard community really came together. Max decided to take upon himself to, to start a GoFundMe account to ensure that Joel would stay in the community. The ARC worked pretty closely with Parkview to make sure that Joel's space would work for Joel. Um, this is probably going to be the last place that Joel lives in. I mean, hopefully this is going to be a place that he lives in for a long time. They had a lot of people out in the community that donated their work and services, as well as materials, to build an additional unit onto an existing house. Essentially, they took the garage that was being used as storage and uh, converted it into a one-bedroom apartment. He feels more, connect, more connected to this community. He's been here for a while. People recognize him and always ask me questions about, about him. I think, you know, he's inspiring because here's this guy that he has a number of setbacks and he's enjoying his life. Why can't I, you know? 
I think he's inspiring for a lot of people. You know, he's a, he's a special person. I'm glad I know him, and I think, uh, you know, it would be bad for him to be shut down, like in a house somewhere away from his community. You know, we really all belong in this community. Having a disability, it, it, you know, that should just be as equal as anything else. I think as long as we're partnering with landlords to make sure that there's affordable options, uh, accessible units that are out there, you know, we want to make sure that we're listening to where that person is interested in living. This is going to continue to be something that we're going to have to work tirelessly for. That will always be the ARC's main mission and vision, is how to provide a community that's really inclusive to all.